Oh, hello. I suppose you're here expecting some vengeance. And I'd love to dish it out, but if you haven't heard, E3 is dead. I mean, yeah, there's Jeff. But Jeff isn't an abstract concept like E3. He's a real dude with a real address. Screaming about vengeancing him just seems weird. So I guess we're about to get weird! Fuck you, Jeff! You think you can trick me into having a normal one? And I'm supposed to do what? Go into the mountains and chop wood like a man who's fulfilled his purpose? Joke's on you, dickhead! I've never had a purpose and never will! You may have tried to take my cringe from me, tucked it away and buttoned it up, made it presentable. Well, you underestimate just how petty I can be. I am the truffle pig of gaming cringe. But you can call me Lyle Wrath. This is Pre-Game Discharge, a video game show for people that don't want to sit through all this shit. Let's fucking do this. So this year's E3 But Not E3 kicked off with Jeffrey's Big Summer. Okay, technically it kicked off with that PlayStation presentation a couple weeks before that. But we talked about that last time. I'm not going to talk about it again. One of the big things that stood out about this year's Summer Jeff Fest is just how little was actually announced. And you know what? That makes sense. So many big games were slated for this year and most companies either just blew their load or have come in something soon that we've known about for a while. I'm not sure if the way to lampshade that was to have Nicolas Cage give a 12 minute speech about being a skin in Dead by Daylight, but uh, that that's what they did. And that's not to say there wasn't stuff there. We got a lot of trailers and in-depth looks at games. It's just mostly stuff we already knew about. Mortal Kombat 1 showed off a lot of its gameplay. It's not a tag fighter, but you get to pick a guy who comes in and punches for you and then leaves like in a tag fighter. Also, if you weren't in the know, if you aren't looped in, yeah, I said Mortal Kombat 1. You know what that means? All the characters you know are different now. Liu Kang and Raiden have switched places. John claude Van Damme is Johnny Cage. It's slightly askew. You better deal with it. Pussy. Spider-Man 2 announced its release date for October 20th. Didn't really show any new gameplay, but a guy came up and said the map will be bigger and you'll move faster through it, which is a pretty good thing for a guy to come up and say. You're just gonna come up and say it. There's a new 2D classic side-scroller style Sonic game coming out with co-op. And because Sonic fans are not allowed to ever have anything that's entirely good, that's only local co-op, no online, and it's a full retail price $60 game. Still probably the most I've actually wanted to play a Sonic game since Shadow started capping motherfuckers. Damn it. You can only make so many jokes about Pinocchio Bloodborne being a real thing before you hit the acceptance stage. And that's about where I'm at with Lies of P. They showed more of it, they put out a demo, I haven't had a chance to play it, but the consensus seems to be that it's actually pretty good. And since there was no actual Bloodborne remaster or PC port to be seen at any of these things, it's looking like Pinocchio isn't a real boy, he's just the boy that reeled up. Alan Wake 2 was actually a newish game. We've never seen actual gameplay of it, and now we've seen a little bit of that. We also got to see Jeff stand up for himself. I don't know what his problem is with this guy. That's Jeff looks like he's gonna, like, punch him or something. Like, what? what is this stance? His fist, his balled up fist. He's standing like fucking Tony Soprano. Like, <laughs> One of those fucking Twitter weirdos with a shitty book needs to draw, like, green and red lines through these guys. It's very strange what's going on here. I love that shit. Sandland is a manga by Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, and it's getting a game. Now, if you'll recall, the rule with anime games is they're always crapped out by Bandai Namco in a very short amount of time, and the only way they end up good is if there's at least a three in the title, and half of it is recycled content because that's the game the first one should have been. Immortals of Avium is a fantasy Doom-type game that's rocking that Forspoken drip. This is batshit bananas! And somehow managed to look worse in this trailer than the last one, which probably at least means that this is real game gameplay, but if you want a cool fantasy Doom game, Witchfire is right there, and it does look genuinely fucking sick. Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, th that's how Yakuza is calling their games now, showed some gameplay, and Kiryu has magic now, apparently. This game looks like it has the classic Yakuza combat system, or the Lost Judgment combat system more specifically, which according to Phil is not the same thing. I haven't played Lost Judgment, so that judgment is lost on me, but do I trust Phil? 
Uh, no. They're doing a new Prince of Persia side-scroller game, which is a weird throwback because it's to before the time when they made that one game that everybody liked. And those other two games that weren't as good but were also better because they had blood and titties in them. It doesn't look bad, though. If it's a Metroidvania, I'm down. And since there was no Hollow Knight Silk Song to be seen at any of these things, the Prince of Persia isn't just a Prince of Persia, he's the Persian that princed up. 40k Space Marine 2 is gonna have three-player co-op, and that looks like straightforward bloody fun. And I want to clarify, since the way that the characters in that game speak might lead to confusion, I mean actual blood. I assure you, I have not taken to talking like a Britoid. There's gonna be a Lord of the Rings game that looks like they're taking a swing at the Deep Rock Galactic formula, which, I don't know, I, I like Deep Rock Galactic enough, but seeing all the same ingredients laid out just isn't doing anything for me. It's one of those games that's kind of more than the sum of its parts. Remnant 2, I know I keep saying this every time it gets a trailer, and this certainly is another one, but this is seriously one to watch. I don't know if I'd call it a roguelike, but it is a fully cooperative Dark Souls-influenced third-person shooter that's different every time you play it. This one might be my most anticipated game for the rest of the year, and it's releasing at the end of July. The only possible competitor to that is Baldur's Gate 3, and it's kind of sort of out already. I'm just waiting to play it. I don't fuck around with early access usually, but especially on a story-driven game, just finish the thing. <sighs> okay, look. I know we just had a whole 24-hour news cycle about a horrific incident in one of these. It doesn't change how fucking cool I think submarines are. I mean, the whole appeal, the dream, is to just disappear into the sea, never to be seen again, and just surround yourself with freaky whales and murky water. It's like the people that want to eat the Tide Pods. Like, you know what they are. I know. It's a quantic dream game. Under the Waves is not going to be good. Just let me have this, all right? Banishers Ghosts of New Eden. This is a game. It's made by Don't Nod, who did Life is Strange and stuff. This looks a little more gameplay focused, but it kind of does seem strung along by cutscenes and canned animations, so I don't know if they could pull off a super fun game. I didn't play Vampire. I know that upsets you as the world's biggest Vampire fan. I know you just peed in anger over Vampire. You took a big Vampire, had your Vampiriad. You know what this reminds me of? Fuck. What was that game called? The one on the PS4. The Order 1886. That's kind of what this is giving. John Carpenter's Toxic Commando is the latest swing from not Valve to make a Left 4 Dead 3, but since there was no Left 4 Dead 3 in any of these things, the real Toxic Commando wasn't the Carpenter John, just the John the Carpenter up. Path of Exile 2 is happening if you're currently playing Diablo 4 and thinking, man, I wish this had a skill tree that gave me a fucking migraine every time I looked at it. There were some other DLCs, new seasons of stuff, some shovelware crap, and some mobile games game's kind of not worth mentioning. And then the show ended off on Final Flappery 7, but uh-oh, no, that's a phone one too. And then Phantom Fantasy Rebirth, which looks equal parts beautiful and confusing as hell. Final Fantasy Remake being like a weird multiverse sequel and not actually a remake means nobody knows where the hell it's going. And frankly, I'm sort of in the camp of once it's finished, you guys can tell me if it's worth giving a fuck or not. Xbix did a little bit better than Summer Jeffrey in my estimation. Billy Jeans was back at 50% denim this time, talking like X Xbox had just discovered the cure for something. You are the heart and soul of Xbox. Your passion drives us, and you are the inspiration for the visionaries whose games we showcase today. I don't know about that, but it was fine. Fable got announced, or maybe they announced it a while ago and didn't show anything from it. I don't know if they really showed anything from it this time either, but some of this looks at least in-engine. Some of it definitely not. And you know, it doesn't really feel like a Fable announcement without some guy relentlessly lying about how they've created the most innovative video game of all time. They saved that for the Starfield section of the presentation. But in a vacuum, the first three Fable games were kind of fun, so yeah, I'm down. Bistar Wars did a pre-rendered cinematic trailer for a new game about girl Han Solo called Outlaws being developed by Ubisoft. I have never heard a recipe with more potential for AAA blandness than Ubisoft Star Wars. That's like the chemical composition for 6 out of 10 dark matter. We got to see some of Obsidian's new game Avowed. Not much, but it's a colorful fantasy first person action RPG. The usual Obsidian skid mark is smaller open worlds, but with lots of choice 
choices that actually matter. That's kind of what I assume this will be, and nothing in the trailer seemed to contradict that idea. Person 3 is getting a ground-up remake. Now, this is a very good and necessary game to remake, I think. On paper, Persona 3 and Persona 5, very similar games. Presentation-wise, night and day. I think anybody who said, I usually don't like JRPGs, but I really like Persona 5, would just not get on with the original Persona 3. So I'm glad to see this. They're also making a Person 5 tactics game with tactical persons in it. It's a good time to be a person that likes person. 33 Immortals is kind of a gimmick game, but the gimmick is cool. It kind of takes the Fall Guys, way too many players on the map approach, but rather than a competitive game, it's a cooperative dungeon crawler. This actually looks like a lot of fun, you know? It's a game you can play with a bigger group of friends with still enough room to spare for random people, so if it all goes to shit, you can blame them instead of yourselves. Hellblade 2 is the rare kind of game where I'm glad they're not showing more of it. If, if you've played Hellblade 1, you probably get where I'm coming from on that. Yakuza Like a Dragon was a game that totally took me by surprise, and it genuinely might be one of my favorites. So I'm super excited for Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth because it's the sequel to that game. It's not because I saw a naked man, okay? I didn't jump out of my chair and scream with joy because of a naked man. I don't do that kind of stuff. The Naked Man trailer had me excited for other reasons, even though all they showed was a naked man, and the boner I had was just a coincidence. You're supposed to get a boner every four hours just from normal circulation, and that just so happened to line up with the naked man on screen, all right? And in my defense, it was Pride Month, but that is unrelated and had nothing to do with it because that's not the reason I had one. Glad we all agree. Ooh, Overwatch 2. Did you hear what Overwatch 2 is doing? Mom! So you know how Overwatch 2 was like, the reason we're calling it Overwatch 2 is because there's gonna be a campaign, so buy the special edition if you wanna play it, and then Overwatch 2 went, fuck you, we're not doing that anymore. Sorry if you bought the special edition. Well, now they're trickling out probably the little bits that they had finished that and are going, these are $15 each, okay? And if you bought the special edition for the campaign, <laughs> They're kind of not exactly the same thing, are they? You probably... You probably owe us $15. This is getting sad at this point. Cyberpunk DLC. Normally, probably just worth glazing over, but some people have actually played it. And more interesting than the DLC itself is that they've completely revamped the systems of the game, including skill trees, the way cyberware and armor works, which is now separate from your clothing, the wanted system when you commit evil crimes, super ray tracing that will cement this as a benchmarking and dick measuring staple for the foreseeable future, and overall improvements to the AI. Cyberpunk Punk has already gotten to the point where it's kind of good even just like right now. These improvements are coming the same day as the DLC, so if you're looking to give it another shot, that would be the time. The newest contender in the let's try to bring back Bioshock arena is here. This time it's a game called Clockwork Revolution. I, that wasn't a pun. I actually did have to check to see if we've seen this game before because I remember distinctly there was a Bioshock type game with a person that had a clock in their hand. This is not that. That's a game called Judas, which the original Bioshock director is actually working on. This one looks very steampunk. It'll have confusing time travel. Hold on. Is it popular opinion that Infinite was not the good Bioshock, or is that like one of those alpha nerd kind of opinions that normal people don't share? Because this is like a Bioshock Infinite, specifically Bioshock style game. Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess is an action game by Capcom that I'm being told by my editor is Kabuki themed? I don't know about that. I didn't see the girl in the middle going, I'm shy. Oh gosh, Look at all of them. Uh, maybe something's being lost in translation here. Anyway, Don't Not is making another game called Climb Child or something. Payday 3 got a gameplay trailer that looks like more Payday. Still Wakes the Deep is like a water horror game, but it's an oil rig, not a submarine, so it's not the vibe. Towerborn looks like a beat em up roguelike with kind of a civilization style conquering board. South of Midnight, no game shown here, but it had a neat claymation looking thing going on and a bayou swamp monster kind of atmosphere, which I think is just the tits. Xbox's service games, Elder Scrolls Online, Fallout 76, Sea of Thieves and Flight Simulator, all getting updates. Farza Motorsport card out all over the stage, which is probably exciting if you want to be an armchair racist, but not in the same way that Call of Duty players are. Which brings us to Starfield, the game of games. I've overall been pretty skeptical and in some cases downright negative about Starfield, but as they've shown more and more of it, that's changed. 
a little. The sheer ambition of a game like this is admirable, even if they are lying or exaggerating about half this shit, which to be clear, I absolutely think they are. Oh, there's a thousand planets. Fuck you. Nobody made a thousand planets. Something auto-generated those, and that's fine in theory, as long as there's a way to tell the grindy miny planets from the important ones. If it's not clear, I could see my ADHD ass getting bored of this game and dropping it because I kept getting pulled into shitty side distractions and never actually got to see the stuff the developers put the real work into. Still, with the extremely high bar Bethesda is setting for themselves, I think Starfield is going to be the next landmark game, whether that's the next Skyrim or the next Cyberpunk. Indie games had a few presentations dedicated to them that I'm not gonna go into for time, and because half of them are games made by Scandinavian tantric sex couples about putting books on shelves or something like that. Steam Next Fest also happened, where a lot of games were available to demo. That's over now, but if there were any super indie projects you're interested in, they probably got some sort of something. All right, Nintendo Direct, let's cap her off here. This also had a lot of announcements for games called like Binky Baby Boo Boo's Goo Goo Gaga Farm Town and ports of games that you probably assumed were already on the Switch anyway. So what was actually worth caring about? In the kind of care category, there's gonna be a new WarioWare, a new Detective Pikachu, a game that kind of looks like Mario 3D World starring Princess Peach that they showed basically nothing of, Pokemon DLC, and a Switch port of Luigi's Mansion 2, which was a 3DS game. There was a kind of cool looking co-op roguelike dungeon crawler called Myth Force that I would play, but not on the Switch. Okay, so for the big ones, Pikmin 4 got a showcase. There's Ghost Pikmin, and you can go out at night. That's what the new stuff boils down to. There's some kind of half Olimar, half Pikmin homunculus running around, which I guess means those rumors about him were unfortunately true. Kind of an anti-announcement is that co-op is gone, or it's there, but it's kind of a Mario Galaxy second player can throw rocks type thing, which immediately killed any interest I had in this game. Super Mario RPG is getting a full-on remake. It's fully 3D, and all the Marios are sawed-off versions of themselves, just actual little freaks. People swear by this game, but you need a thousand-year door remake to make me piss and poop and piss, poop, and poop, piss. This is my job to say stuff like this. I, I did not graduate at college. Mario Wonder is a new Super Mario-style game. Mario Eat the Funny Mushroom and Get High is now canon. He becomes long. It has this 2D, 3D hybrid style, which I'd usually be all about. I just don't think it looks great. Hey, Nintendo, you should have got your friends at Ubisoft to stop making Minions DLC and got them on this instead. Have you seen Rayman Legends? It looks way better than this. Mario turns into a gross, scary elephant. I hate it. So that was E3, or what would have been one. I don't know if it's ever gonna be back. Apparently that all-digital one they did during the covidy wovidy lost them like six million dollars. Still, this was not a total wet fart. I mean, did you notice how many service games I talked about? Or rather, how many service games I didn't talk about? In a weird way, I think gaming is healing a bit. I do wish E3 was still around to see it, but maybe it's looking down on us like a James Earl Jones lion that is our dad. Except we hated that piece of shit. Anyway, here are the game releases for the month. I'm Lyle Rath, and this has been Pre-Game Discharge. If you like the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. We do new episodes at the end of every month, and we've got some new cartoons on the way, too. But for now, go. Return to the great meat bath of life and conquer.